Well, this is just an absolutely fantastic thing to have a local San Diego team here in the finals, and uh, everyone's super excited to uh, to have them in here, and especially excited to have Drew Smith joining us here on the commentary desk. Welcome, Drew. Thank you very much. Thank you. So this is uh, there's just there's so many good things about you being here in the finals, including that this is only your second year in the competition. Yes, we've come a long way from last year. Um, we started the design phase last last summer, so we've moved on. Quite as you can see in our video, uh, our previous sub was a Pelican case and 80-20 rail. So from there, we've completely redesigned. It's been a, a building year for sure. Uh, we custom machined hull, uh, upgraded some thrusters, and we also did a custom PCB design. So that was different from last year. We had used a lot of off-the-shelf microcontrollers, but this year we had entirely used uh, PIC microcontrollers and our own custom PCBs uh, to do most of the embedded systems work. And We've also been able to reuse a lot of the uh, visual, um, forgive me, the, uh, the vision software. Yes, thank you, the visual software. So we're using uh, Python, OpenCV, to do the uh, image processing and things like that. So we were able to reuse some components and some lessons from last year, um, but it's really come together this year. So what's been your strongest and most reliable uh, subtask in the water? What, 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 what can you always feel like you can hit the points with? Definitely the buoys. We've gotten some good practice with the, the dropper, which we're hoping will we'll ace today as well. Um, we unfortunately didn't get our hydrophones working in time, but we are also incorporated a DVL this year. So our navigation has become uh, greatly increased from last year. Last year it was dead reckoning. Uh, so having the DVL and getting serious waypoints and accurate waypoints was a huge um, advantage. How yeah. many people do you have on your team and how long do you spend building this new robot? Uh, so we've put about a year of design plus also the, the lessons like we had learned from last year. Our team's around 40 people. Mm -hmm. uh, we are divided into four subsections. We have a business, electrical, software, and mechanical. Mm -hmm. But more than just robo sub competition, we also have a learning program at state called Mechatronics 101. So we invite high schoolers and underclassmen, and it allows us to build the skills necessary to compete in robo sub. Mm -hmm. That's great to hear, like continuing on the lessons that you guys learn and getting more people involved in this whole robo sub community. Absolutely, the, the whole robo sub nation. Um, <laughs> We're thinking about joining Robo Air very soon too, and and contemplating maybe Robo Boat as well. Yeah, I should talk to Zoss about that. He <laughs> oh, has a lot okay. of experience. Yeah, well, I strongly recommend it. I really hope to see you at Robo Boat, especially. That would be great. Okay. Yeah, we're looking forward to, to expanding. That'll give you guys a chance to take a little uh, remote vacation as well, since uh, <laughs> Robo Boat's over the other side of the country. Yeah, we've lucked out being that this is always hosted in our hometown, and and again, uh, we're really honored to to represent the first San Diego team to make it. Um, but traveling would be a, a cool experience as well. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, there's a lot to like about San Diego, but a uh, change of scenery wouldn't be too bad. I don't know, we're pretty spoiled around <laughs> here. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, we uh, that's another thing is we're, our club is growing. We've, we've gotten support from the school this year, which was a, a great help, and our two major sponsors, uh, Lidos and Symer, have really helped us expand and, and uh, able to progress in, in our knowledge and skills. Well, it looks like we're underway over here, getting some nice underwater shots uh, of the boat in the water. Um, yeah, so, uh, so, so it looks like the sub's lining up the shot, so uh, we're doing the image processing to check the color and um, hopefully get a hit there. A little tough to tell from that angle. Uh, has Dave changed the uh, buoy order for the finals, it, do you know? It looks low, so I'm not sure. Um, and it's, it's very difficult to see from the camera's perspective what the colors really are, too. I've always had difficulty with that. That just underscores the difficulty of the computer vision challenge. Uh -huh. uh, we always talk about this because it seems like a very straightforward task uh, to a person that hasn't programmed a robot before to say, well, green and, re green and red, they're totally different. But under the water, the green looks like yellow, yellow looks like green. <laughs> it's, it's very confusing. Well, and the, the unique challenge is they change throughout the day. As the sunlight mm -hmm. comes through the water, the hues change a little bit. So that's part of what our image processing is able to detect is the, the hue saturation values. Um, so hopefully that was a, another miss or um, another hit. What are you guys attempting to do for the course? So uh, the buoys, we also can line up the uh, the, na the waypoints, the, na the navigation um, 
lines on the bottom of the pool. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hoping to do the time portal and backwards as well with style. Yeah. Uh, we have a dropper attached, so mm -hmm. we're hoping to do that as well. And with hopefully with uh, the correct waypoints, we're hoping to surface in one of the octagons. Cool. And without the um, our hydrophone system working, it's kind of a 50-50 shot, but we'll, you know, fingers crossed. <laughs> well, it's always worth keeping in mind that this is a competition, and within the rules, anything goes. Yep. <laughs> so if you can uh, figure out a way to triangulate and um, set physical waypoints to get to that octagon, that's just fine. A lot of applause there in the background. That looked like a very nice uh, reverse through the time portal. Yes, excited. With style. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Um, the only thing about uh, Dead Reckoning those octagons is it's a bit of a psychological game with Dave Novick because you don't know which pinger he has selected to be the correct one. Yes. No, and we were eyeing his little box too that helps uh, set up because that was actually one of the things we had difficult testing with. We bought the same pingers but we had a trouble getting them to the, the right phase, right? The, the one second intervals and stuff. So it might be something we'll have to expand for next year. So it looks like we're lining up the dropper boxes now. Um, and the way that the code works is it should recognize each one. The uh, refueling bins this year back in a straight line. They've mixed it up a little last year with the uh, bins in a kind of a X-shaped arrangement. But now we have the straight line. And of course, one of them covered with a purple plate with a handle that uh, in order to achieve the primary bin points, a sub would actually need to lift that plate. Uh, I heard some clapping there, so perhaps there was a marker dropped. Let's see, it's zooming in. Is there any specific um, like shape for your marker that you can actually easily recognize on screen whether the marker is in the bin? The, no, I don't believe we have anything like that, but we can do the shape recognition with the bins. Uh -huh. Tell us a little bit about the design of the of the markers. How does that dropping mechanism work, and what, what are the markers? It's just a simple waterproof servo, and, and as the servo moves, the ball falls from without the, uh, from through the hole. So it, if our, we had a lot of problems with lead times, unfortunately. Uh, some, some lessons have learned, um, and especially building the sub from scratch this year. Uh, so we had to change our weapons designs a lot. Matter of fact, we have a, a perfectly good working pneumatic system at home, but we just couldn't get it working in time. So come next year, you might see some, some new stuff from us. Well, I remember from talking to you guys earlier that there was another detail about that pneumatics box. Uh, you guys were coming up against the, some pretty tight limitations on the sub's weight. Yes. So that was a... Uh, a, a very difficult challenge. You can see our uh, DeLorean wings there, the goal wings. <laughs> uh, so we use that for, ooh, right on the edge. Um, but yeah, we had to reduce our weight and that limited our payload. Uh, but not only that, also the buoyancy was a big issue. Um, a lot of the assumptions we made weren't exactly correct, but you know, we, we improvised. We, we found some kickboards, cut them up and threw them on. Good old zip ties and kickboards. <laughs> Well, you know, coming from San Diego, it's um, appro maybe appropriate for a, a, big, uh, a robot to have a boogie board attached. You know, I've been trying to get them to put fins on it, like a shark fin, but I guess this is the, ne the next best thing. <laughs> well, you got to be careful with that. You don't want the sub getting punched by an Australian surfer. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. Fortunately, yeah, and there's probably a lot around here too, right? Uh, so we just saw the sub surface in the octagon that's closest to us here at the commentary desk. We do not know which is the correct octagon at any given time because that's up to Dave. He can switch those pingers whenever he wants between runs. Well, so we just have to guess. Yeah, 50-50. Um, so still 13 minutes on the clock. So are we lining up for uh, maybe uh, another one, try and get both? It's hard for us to tell. The divers are not swimming in to grab the sub, so that means that run is still going. As, uh, as always, we have to do a big shout out and thanks to the Spay War Navy divers who uh, work really hard in the pool all day, all week for us here in Robo Subs. They do, they do a great job um, out, out there uh, in, in the elements with the subs. So thanks to them. Oh, no, a, a great thanks. We know how difficult that is. We've spent many times pool testing, and it's a tiring, tiring task. 
Some, some of these subs are also capable of great speeds in the water, and uh, we've seen the divers have to really put on maximum energy to swim after them and catch them sometimes. Yeah, no, and, and our subs got uh, quite a little bit of kick. Um, I've, I told the software team to limit how much they use the motors. Maybe I'm babying. I, I designed the thruster control board, so maybe I'm babying the board a little <laughs> bit. But um, yeah, she, she can get around. I think we just heard your team asking for them to kill the robot. OK. And I just overheard one of the divers saying there was a ball bearing drop, so hopefully it made it into um, one of the, the bins. marker bins, the yes. hopefully the correct one, and uh, be, divers will be swimming down to retrieve that now. Once again, with the bins, there's a primary bin, which is the one that's covered by the purple plate, and then there's a secondary one, which we're we, uh, not necessarily sure which one it is, um, but it ha the symbol will be known to the teams ahead of time for them to do recognition on, and all of those symbols are taken from the uh, fuel refueling of the DeLorean in Back to the Future. So the Mr. Fusion, the soda, the banana, and the lightning bolt. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty excited about that. A lot of Back to the Future fans <laughs> and among our team, so. They're uh, actually gonna re-release that movie for the 30th anniversary uh, later this year. Oh, wow, that'd be the really original cool. One. Remastered and everything, maybe? I assume so. Yeah, that's, that's really great. That is a classic. Once again, uh, if you'd like to send any questions in uh, for any of us here on the commentary desk, robosubqa at gmail.com. Uh, more, than, more than half your time remaining, Drew, so um, we what, got, what's uh, your feeling? We might have another shot. See, uh, be interesting to see. That's Austin and Rodrigo, you can see right there, debating on maybe uh, what strategy you should, we should go with. <laughs> <laughs> and Marianne. <laughs> a very happy goal. Uh, so here's a, a strategic question uh, for you, Drew. Does Dave give you feedback after a run as to whether or not you hit the correct octagon? That I don't know. I would imagine you'd want to keep that a secret up until the, the run ends. So, so we don't, we, we may not know uh, for quite some time whether or not that surfacing was the correct yeah, octagon. No, it, and it doesn't really give you a lot of information whether or not to start a new run. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we didn't find out until it was the right, correct octagon yesterday during semifinals until several hours after. So even then, it was kind of still a mystery. Um, so yeah, you're right. So that, that's probably going over our team leaders' heads right now. And <laughs> do we go again? Do we make it? Do we try the other one? That's all part of the tactics of this competition. Um, just uh, a decision that teams always have to make under stress with not much time to make it. Yeah, but either way, we've come this far and we're really excited to be here again. So we made great strides. Uh, we placed eight last year, so no matter how we place today, it, it's still a, a, an improvement. And that's what we're looking for, is especially with only our second time here. Yeah, well, you know, it just it, everyone, everyone is super excited to see you up here and it just goes to show uh, for anyone that's starting a new team, if you're serious about this, if you're willing to put the work in, you can go from being a rookie team one year to in the finals and a shot at the big money uh, the next year. It's it, just absolutely fabulous. Absolutely. It just takes a lot of work, a lot of <laughs> sleepless nights. <laughs> Speaking of sleepless nights, um, because you're the local team, obviously you're not staying in the competition hotel where lots of teams stay up all night testing this sub in the pool. Do you have an opportunity to do pool testing at night um, during the competition. We were lucky enough to have our team leaders and have a pool. So, nice. but there was a time where our sub actually outgrew that, right? You know, the DVL doesn't yeah. work too well in a tiny pool. So we ended up renting our own school's pool that was 17 feet and uh, we got some good footage in there. We actually were able to create a, a mock uh, competition set. So we had some good practice with the buoys and the entrance gate and the time portal. Um, and, and so those were kind of our bread and butters coming in. But for example, last night, you know you're in the finals, there may be last minute tweaks to do, could you get into a pool last night? I really don't think we needed to. We were confident enough. Uh, our software team has done an a, amazing job creating this GUI so we can actually see inside the sub, the different cameras, the motor movements, the missions, uh, and, and included in that is also a, a mission planner. So with that defined, it was more about tweaking the missions than it was about tweaking anything in the sub in the water. Well, I've just received word that uh, the team has called it. They've accepted that run. Oh, okay. It looked like a great run to me. So uh, let's go and see what Dan has for us at the dock.
It's on info. Yeah. So there was some d intense deliberation. How did you feel about you know the partial, partial surfacing? You know we'll take it. You know points are points, and uh, you know we're we're happy that we hit the dropper. It was a 50 50 percent chance there, and we actually got it. And uh, we're just we're really happy to be where we're at right now. Good. What did you make you choose the style for going through the time portal? Uh, we knew that uh, the vehicle had really good uh, control systems and we figured we'd be able to pull it off and we the success rate of that was around 80% so we figured we'd just go for it. Well, thank you for participating and back to you Zaz. Wow, just, uh, just, just fabulous. Everyone there, just uh, eat away smiles. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations from all of us. Big smiles. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's cool. Um, I want to just, uh, since, we, since we have you here and we've got a little extra time, uh, just take a little few closer looks at the sub and look at the work that you guys have put into it. Because Certainly. I was blown away when I came over and saw the transition from Pelican case to custom machined uh, submarine and everything that you guys have put in. Yeah, no, I'd be happy to. So uh, you can see the hole from um, end to aft. The, each one is modular so that we can actually get into the interior of the sub. On the end there is the acrylic tube where we have our design PCBs, all custom made, and, and what we did was we divided the task into daughter cards, which allowed us organizationally as a team be able to team up mentors um, and designers together to, to build these, these circuit boards, and then they plug into a backplane. From that backplane, we have a communications board that plugs in through USB to a motherboard, and that's where the OpenCV and Python code um, runs. And the front of the nose cap, you'll actually see if you can, there you go. So that's actually where our camera is. We have one forward looking and we have one underneath actually, that's hard to see exactly right there. Uh, so we can see the bottom floor and, and ahead of us. Uh, we have eight thrusters, so that gives us all the degrees of freedom we need. Uh, up, down, yaw, uh, pitch as well, which was a, a new feature we added from last year. Um, on the top is our Ahars enclosure. So that's where our, our AHARSes are enclosed. That's also where our kill and reset switch are. So we have a, a digital and analog uh, kill to prevent from accidentally turning the sub on. Um, so kind of a fail safe there. I'm, not, you know, I'm just super impressed looking at the, the physical design too, that custom machine, machine casing. Um, all uh, CNC'd and anodized. It's got the cooling fins and everything. Yeah. It's just a beautiful piece of work. We were really concerned. Uh, we got a lot of criticism saying that uh, we might have been overheating the sub inside. And, and after building a custom heat sink for our processor, we were doing fine. So, you know, and, and the, the competition's only 20 minutes or so, but, but it was a lot handier to handle that heat, especially for testing, because the sub could be in the, the water for hours. Um, and th that's also why we use uh, the batteries we do. They give us a much longer lifespan than just uh, like a regular LiPo would use. So they're lithium iron phosphate. Uh, two of the battery enclosures, you can see yeah. the, the cable coming off the side there. So uh, yeah, that's some of those really nice uh, uh, LiFe PO4 batteries that have come out now that are in the form factor of a lead acid battery, but they've got a built-in battery management system. Uh, charge monitoring and 12.7 volts if I recall correctly so it's just like using a lead acid but a lot lighter. No and the battery management system is pretty nice. We've uh, put them in parallel this year. That was another uh, lesson from last year is we had a separate battery for the logic and the motors. Uh, we found that we were actually turning the sub off at certain moments so we decided to put them in parallel to get uh, more capacity and amperage um, and it worked out well because we could really uh, we could add two more thrusters and even run the thrusters a little harder for speed. And uh, here's a little close-up uh, of that dropper system that we talked about earlier. Yes, yeah, so just a simple waterproof servo and then a, a waterproof cable that comes into the sub and, and then uh, that goes up through the comm board up into our, um, our motherboard. So that you'll find a metal ball inside that kind of little PC, P, or sorry, excuse me, PVC pipe uh, and it just drops through when the servo rotates. Yeah, it's, it's really nice and um, a good way to uh, get things done quickly and easily 
when the pneumatics, you know, uh, had to be removed for lack for the weight problem. Yeah, the weight problem was a big scare. Uh, we had to go get one of those gigantic fishing weight uh, <laughs> weighers, and we were weighing the sub constantly. We actually had a tally to figure out what we could take on and off. And um, after we remilled the aft cap, which you can see is a little silver, we we lost a fair amount of weight, uh, which helped us and. And there, there right there is actually something we should really highlight. That's yeah, I really GUI. wanted to feature that because we often talk about the physical design. Uh, it's very tough to visualize the software, which is such an important part of this competition, but you guys have done a fantastic GUI here to help out with that. Our software team has done an amazing job. So the two top screens you can see is the front and bottom facing camera, and the two bottom ones is actually where you can control the color you want to track onto with the image processing. Uh, so in runtime, if we can train it to look for a particular color like a buoy, uh, we can snapshot that thing, highlight the color we need, and then the sub will track that, that same color every time. And the sliders there can adjust the hue, saturation um, as well. And, and you can see there's uh, some buttons there to start the vehicle, end the vehicle. And we also created custom profiles for each of the team members. So as we all had turns uh, working with the software we could customize the things we wanted to look at um, yeah, and then so, uh, on it's just it's just so nice to have an e have easy access to all that stuff um, and uh, one thing it's like it's really tough to see from this uh, from this image you know it's just a camera snapshot in the Sun you know there's all these reflections but very very faintly here you, there's uh, all kinds of uh, on-screen display stuff that's been overlaid on there that's uh, really, really nicely programmed. And that was entirely customizable to, to the user. There's a drop-down menu where you can choose your name. So if I wanted the motor duty cycle, if I wanted the heading, the pitch, the all, all those particular things that we were working on, you could actually customize. And it, it's <laughs> it looks amazing. And the other thing you can't see is the different tabs. So if you were to hit a different tab, you would go to the mission waypoint planning where you can actually choose you know, a navigation mission, a buoy mission. Uh, the different missions we had practiced over time. Yeah, one thing that was really impressive to me was the way the attitude of the sub was projected in 2D onto those screens so that you could see uh, what the what the sub was doing in three dimensions over the top of that video. It was the only way to figure out its behavior, you know, especially with how tricky some of the code can be um, and training the DVL or at least getting how the DVL acts was a huge a huge help because there'd be times where we'd tell it to go to a waypoint, but if it didn't exactly hit that waypoint, um, it kind of gets stuck. So learning the behavior, finding what mode it's in, uh, was a huge help in, in training it. Yeah, it's really fantastic. Uh, I don't know what else I photographed here, but I thought it was all, all really great. Um, little little peek there at the at the DVL underneath. Um, so one, one, one thing that's been really impressive this year as in the competition as a, as, a whole, as a whole is how many teams have managed to get hold of DBLs this year, including one team which actually bought one from Cornell. So we've had like the first major equipment transfer between teams here, wow. illustrating what a community it is here. We might have to participate in this black market. <laughs> what else can we get our hands on? Yeah, how, how did you uh, approach fundraising and getting pieces of major equipment like that DBL? So that was handled by our business team. We we're very fortunate to have some great individuals, uh, Andrew mostly, who um, help us keep the business aspect of the team while the engineering aspect can keep going on. So they handle a lot of the sponsorship and give us a very professional look uh, to the club because it's more than just RoboSub as well. We're trying to develop some of uh, the robotics on campus with Mechatronics 101. So it, it, it's also outreach, um, anything we can do to, to increase hands-on learning. Um, we, uh, I don't know if we're, we're able to pull up these selfies yet, but we just uh, received one from uh, Patrick from Sonia, who oh. was the team leader in 2013. So that's a, a real blast from the past. It's great to see all the alumni still tuning in and, and saying hello. He has a, a special hello, hello to Grace. Uh, he remembers her from back then. Um, because the phrase that I mentioned is what Patrick told me two years ago. <laughs> well, welcome, Patrick. Thanks for tuning in. Um, and he also requested another um, recap of the finals listing. So let me give that to you now. With, with the times that I have, um, I only have two. Uh, coming up next, um, at 2.20 will be Far Eastern Federal University. Uh, that's the runtime. Uh, we'll start then. And then the runtime of Bumblebee from the National University of Singapore will be at 2.45. Then after that, we still don't know the order, but we know the teams. They are Amador Valley High School, Caltech, and Maritime State University.
Coast. So uh, please do stay tuned uh, to support your favorite teams there. Send in your questions, selfies, and so on uh, to robosubqa at gmail.com. We are uh, just getting ready to uh, start up with Far Eastern Federal University. Um, we're going to, uh, I see that a rep team representative just about getting ready here to join us. So, Drew, thanks so much again for joining us up here, giving us like such an intensive rundown of what you guys have done and just for being such an impressive team to come from a, a rookie team to uh, just a fabulous finals run in just yeah. one year. Thank you. It's been a long journey and we certainly appreciate the opportunity. So thank you very much. Oh, you're most, most welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Drew. Thank you, Grace.